Hi, my name is Sam Green. I'm director of the Democratic Resilience Program here at the Center for European Policy Analysis. This fireside chat is part of our State of the Alliance series, bringing together thought leaders and policymakers from Europe and North America to deliberate on the most pressing issues facing the alliance. Today's conversation will focus on the State of the Alliance's response to the ongoing challenges uh, in Ukraine uh, and uh, the uh, agenda for the NATO summit uh, upcoming later this year uh, in Vilnius. Um, very happy to welcome to SIPA uh, Ambassador Radovan Yevorchik, uh, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Slovak Republic uh, to the United States since uh, January of 2021. Prior to coming to Washington, uh, Ambassador Yevorchik uh, served since 2017 as Ambassador and permanent representative of Slovakia to the North Atlantic Council uh, in Brussels, indeed has spent uh, a long career uh, dealing with uh, both Slovakia's uh, relationships with NATO and NATO itself uh, since 1998, serving uh, in various posts in Brussels, including on the team uh, 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 negotiating and preparing Slovakia's uh, accession to uh, the North Atlantic Alliance. Uh, Ambassador, welcome to SIPA. My pleasure to be in SIPA. Thank you very much again for, for joining us uh, uh, today. Um, uh, as we talk about you know, the state of the alliance now more than a year uh, into uh, Russia's full-scale uh, invasion uh, and brutal war, frankly, um, in, um, uh, in Ukraine, I think we got to start um, uh, with that. What is your assessment uh, of uh, how the alliance has performed uh, thus far in, in this war? Well, I will start with the, with the obvious. Uh, Alliance is in a much better shape than before the crisis because uh, two countries uh, requested ent to enter NATO, Sweden and Finland. Finland is already in. We hope uh, in Vilnius, Sweden be, uh, will be in as well. So from this mathematical point of view, it's clear that NATO is in very good shape. Um, but on, a, on a hidden side of, uh, of NATO, the, the non-public, non um, I think NATO is doing uh, pretty well in two things. Making sure that it's defensive alliance, it's not aggressively pushing any agenda. Uh, but on the other hand, it's not just reactive. It's not just waiting what is happening. If you look into all the adaptation of NATO, the defense and deterrence, um, the plans for defense of the territory, um, willingness of nations to use contacts within NATO to, um, to coordinate assistance to Ukraine, not necessarily under the banner of NATO. That, that, was, that was a political move, and we will, will not use banner of NATO for assistance to Ukraine, but, um, but NATO plays as, as a convening, uh, convening venue, uh, but under the banner of Rammstein platform to, to find ways how to assist Ukraine on one hand, and other, uh, on, the, on the second hand, how to help the allies to strengthen their own defenses. Look at look at Slovakia, which before uh, the the aggression uh, of February t t 24, uh, sorry 22, um, was still hovering between a slow and a faster pace of modernization of armed forces. Suddenly, we are getting rid of any remnants of the Soviet era design uh, weapons, re uh, replacing with a, a modern Western type or co collaborative Western type um, uh, equipment. And on top of it, we are engaging in discussions how to strengthen NATO presence in eastern flank. And this, this, this is this is a major breakthrough, because if you recall NATO of the past, it was still. Um, I don't want to say uncertain, but it was cautious about showing how much presence NATO as a whole has on the eastern flank. And we were among the odd advocates saying, well, be realistic. We, we cannot just leave it in, a, in the clouds that maybe some, somehow NATO will expand uh, the, the quality and quantity of infrastructure um, connectivity uh, with all the allies. Now we have it. And this is this is just a wonderful thing which is happening, and uh, I, I would quote my my uh, good friend and colleague, um, American ambassador to, to Slovakia, Gautam Rama, Rana from two days ago when he said Slovakia has never been in a better position to defend itself, together with the, with its allies. So I'm I'm proud that NATO has used this crisis as always to be better and come more, better prepared for for the next challenges. There's a lot to unpack there. We'll get into uh, a conversation in a bit about uh, the future of uh, NATO security architecture and indeed the security architecture for, for Europe as a whole. Uh, but sticking with Ukraine for a moment, um, 
NATO has been very clear and the allies have been very clear uh, that um, a, a, a strategic victory right, for Ukraine is vital to the security, not only of Ukraine, uh, but to the security of the alliance, the security of Europe, and in fact, the security uh, and, and, and peace and prosperity in the world more broadly. Um, it's been somewhat less clear, uh, I think, on what exactly uh, a, uh, a Ukrainian victory uh, entails uh, and what that victory needs to look like in order to bring the kind of security that, that NATO uh, envisages. Uh, what, in, in your view, uh, does that victory look like? Well, once again, uh, we shall not uh, fall in the trap saying the victory is when X, Y, Z, um, uh, Russian soldier will leave this or that part of, of, of Earth, mm -hmm. or whether this or that country will become a member of NATO. That, these are like a f uh, factual qualificators, and I'm not too, too uh, big fan of those. Mm -hmm. For me, the strategic victory of Ukraine is defending its, uh, its sovereignty and sovereignty to, to exist, and lead the ceasefire and future negotiations with, uh, with the um, aggressor, uh, Moscow, under key of ter terms, not under Berlin or Beijing or um, uh, Moscow or Bratislava terms. These should be Kyiv terms because Kyiv is under, uh, and Moscow is, oh, sorry, Ukraine is under attack from, um, from, from Russia slash Moscow. Um, what it entails is, uh, is uh, for me, a moment when, um, when Ukrainian plea to become part of what I call European or trans transatlantic market, political market, economic market, and military market, when Ukraine will be fully anchored to those three markets. Um, in NATO, obviously, everybody is expecting NATO summit to say something more than uh, NATO summit 2008, that Ukraine will become a member of NATO. There should be some a new arrangement, realignment of political dialogue between NATO and Ukraine, which will definitely show that Ukraine is part of, of this broader military or defense or security market, mm -hmm. which, which is based on rules set by Washington Treaty. Um, and also on the side of, of, uh, of EU, that Ukraine will be firmly on a path to get EU membership. And, and just to, to recall that all these paths to European political mil um, uh, military defense or security market and economic market are not because Brussels or Bratislava wants it. These, uh, these are our responses to Kyiv and uh, Ukrainian um, requests to be, to be part of this political, economic, and security environment. Um, it's a broad construction of a uh, victory, one that I think a lot of people would, would, um, uh, would agree with. There is a military component, obviously, to it one way or another. Um, does Ukraine have what it needs, uh, both politically and militarily, um, to diplomatically, uh, to uh, achieve the kind of victory that you're outlining? Uh, you're spot on. Um, we have to have a full picture. Um, politically, I guess, and I'm I, a firm believer, we have political uh, components of support to Ukraine uh, quite firm. Um, l just to look into the votes in uh, United, uh, United Nations General Assembly, uh, l just look into the push to, um, to have the international sanctioned um, a court or a tribunal which will uh, look into war crimes committed um, in Ukraine by, by Russian, uh, Russian military. Um, the uh, act of aggression is, uh, is quite clear, um, and there is a huge push by many countries outside the uh, EU as well, in Europe and the US, to, to have uh, Russia account to, to hold Russia accountable. On economic terms, um, this is perhaps the, the most, the, the easiest part to respond from uh, any European uh, nation, European Union nation, I mean. Uh, and the US as well, because European Union as such is already, including Slovakia, is looking into how we will ensure that on a day when the atrocities will stop in Ukraine, we will jumpstart working with Ukrainians to rebuild the economy on the standards, which are standards in European Union. That's what I call the European Union uh, economic market. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be part of that economic market, you cannot be politically bound somewhere else. European Union market is about the values, which are basically the same as, as uh, NATO Washington Treaty. So that's, that, that's economic. And I, I'm sure that you know, we in European Union will take our 
lion's share in providing resources, knowledge, support, assistance, whatever it, it needs for Ukrainians to get closer to the European uh, Union on economic terms. On military terms, obviously, Ukraine expects uh, way more than we, we, are, we are delivering. On part of Slovakia, I can say that um, <laughs> the military assistance we are giving to, to Ukraine, or we gave already to Ukraine, amounts to 25% of our national um, uh, defense budget. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's almost um, uh, half a billion of, uh, of euros in equipment, direct support, ammunition uh, and training. So it's, it's a huge amount of, uh, of money. Obviously, we want to see and we want, we want to assist the Ukrainians with acquiring those weapons which will allow them to push the Russians out from, from their territory uh, and to be able. That's one step. Sec uh, step number two is to ensure that any time in the future, Ukrainian soil will be under attack of anybody. That anybody will be scared to do any step mm -hmm. because they will know they will, they will be punished heavily. And you cannot do that with, uh, uh, with old-style uh, Soviet design uh, weaponry. It has to be Western because that's the best on, on, on the market with all the military doctrines which are uh, devised by, uh, by NATO and within NATO. These are the procedures, how military is working. So yes, we can and should do more. And um, the only question is, where are the boundaries of our capabilities? And now I, I will perhaps use a mm -hmm. quote, uh, my favorite quote from my uh, latest uh, trip from, uh, to, to one of the southern uh, states of the United States. Um, Franklin Delano, Delano Roosevelt uh, said that the US has to be um, armory or arsenal for democracy. And I think this is the most important thing for all, all of us on the democratic side of, of the West, to be arsenal for Ukraine to defend itself. I'm not saying that we should have uh, thousands of boots on the ground, mm -hmm. but we have to be reliable partner for Ukrainians that whenever the Ukrainians will need the, the, the military assistance, they will know that the Slovaks, Czechs, Americans, British, whoever, will come and say, here you are, what, that's what you need, and here it is. So with that in mind, but also returning to something you said earlier about the, 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 the bigger picture uh, um, uh, challenges and questions facing uh, NATO as we get to Vilnius and, 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 and beyond, um, you know, the, the, the war has in a lot of ways, I think, upended a lot of our uh, assumptions, uh, at least some people's assumptions about what it was that made Europe and, and, uh, and, and NATO secure, uh, about uh, the foundations of that, uh, of that security um, uh, architecture. Um, what are the, you know, as we look to, to, to the summit, um, what are the critical steps that the alliance is going to need to take uh, to, uh, to rebuild security on a stronger foundation after this war is over? Um, there are several stra uh, strands of, of work and debates. Obviously, it's uh, internal defense and deterrence, the, the whole structure uh, which supports um, the territorial defense and deterrence of NATO. Um, and uh, there is a new thought that defense um, by uh, denial. It may sound very aggressive, but I, if you look into what Russia was doing for many years, Russia was really pushing on denying NATO to defend itself, to perform defense of, of territory. I'm not saying that we will, as NATO, go out and deny Russia to do whatever they, they need to secure their own territorial sovereignty. No, that's, that's for the Russians and it's fully legal and, and leg legitimate. But by denial, to deny us to, to, to defend ourselves. Um, that, 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 that's, that's, that's the first, a little bit more complicated, murky and foggy um, agenda. Uh, second is um, obviously on defense spending. And it's uh, the, the famous um, uh, Wales, uh, Wales um, uh, commitment, the uh, defense uh, uh, investment uh, pledge, which says that 2% of GDP should be, uh, we should be aiming to 2%. Uh, my government and many governments uh, in the NATO states are saying, this is, this is the bottom line. It should, it should be the bottom line. It shouldn't be the ceiling. It should be the bottom line. And in our case, we just uh, reached to 2% and we will be aiming for, for more. Um, and, and the, th the third component, which is visible, is uh, uh, managing our relations with Ukraine. So we will be uh, responsive, respected, but, but uh, reliable. That whatever we do with Ukraine is, is workable, that we will not fly in, a, in, a, in a high clouds and uh, promising something which is un un unreasonable. 
And with that goes a whole um, bunch of relations with the countries lying outside NATO, including uh, the Indo-Pacific nations. So saying uh, by that that NATO is, is not obviously going to be militarily active in, uh, in the Pacific. That's out of the, the, um, uh, the, the treaty bounds. But to have this mesh or web of relationships with like-minded countries who are debating common threats and, and challenges on, on the security and the military side. So from Vilnius, I think it will be very, very important to, to reiterate that we have this web network of um, honest debates with key partners. By the way, in, in Latin America, Colombia is one of the valid partners as well. Uh, it does no harm to NATO uh, to have this connection. Second, that we, sp we know that we spend enough uh, resources to, to defend ourselves. We know how to do it. And with immediate neighbor, we know that, that uh, we are providing the immediate neighbor, Ukraine, with all uh, what, what, what they need. Thank you. Um would like to thank Ambassador Radovan Yevorcic for, um, for this discussion. Um, uh, please stay tuned uh, to uh, Deceipa Center for European Policy Analysis as we continue to engage both in the State of the Alliance series uh, and with broader issues uh, uh, emerging from uh, these discussions having to do with Ukraine, with the state of security in Europe, with the North Atlantic uh, Alliance, and indeed with the uh, resilience of democratic society, states, and institutions uh, around the transatlantic space. Uh, Ambassador Yevorchich, thank you very much for your time, and good luck. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.